Okay, so in this video, we're gonna have a look at lots of different problems using indices. Now, when it comes to problem solving, there are obviously lots of different types of questions that you can get, and there are different methods that you can go through. So what we're gonna have a look at is three different styles of questions throughout this video, starting with the one that you can see on the screen. And hopefully by the end of the video, you're gonna have a little bit of a different toolkit to be able to tackle some of these sorts of questions and maybe even apply some of those methods onto other questions. So we're going to have a look at three different types and with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so moving on to our first question. Now this question here says find the value of, and then we have the fourth root of 27 times three times 10 to the power of eight. Now this is a non-calculator question. So we're not just gonna type this into a calculator, we're actually gonna need to work it out without one. So something that we can think about here is actually looking at the base numbers. And what I mean by that is if we look at the start of some of these pieces, we have a 27 and a three. Now 27 is actually a power of three. We could write 27 as three to the power of three, as it is three cubed. So we've got 3 to the power of 3 multiplied by 3 to the power of 1. So actually that could simplify down to 1 power of 3. And if we add those powers together, that would become 3 to the power of 4. Remembering you add the powers when you are multiplying. As long as we have the same base numbers, that is, which we do. So now we have 3 to the power of 4. We've then got that that is being multiplied by 10 to the power of 8. So we've simplified the first bit, and now we know it's 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 8. Now what you could do is you could actually go and work that out. Okay, you could work out 3 to the power of 4, you could work out 10 to the power of 8, you could add all those zeros on. But ultimately we are also going to have to find the fourth root of that, which isn't going to be very nice. So now we need to think about that fourth root and how we could actually apply uh, something a little different for writing the fourth root. Now we should already know that when we write a certain power like something like x to the power of a half, x to the power of a half is the same as the square root of x. And I'm going to put that 2 in place because obviously here we're looking at a fourth root. So if we instead were going to have a fourth root there, we could think about what power that would be. Well it would be x to the power of a quarter and that would actually find the fourth root. But how does that help us? So if instead we write this as all to the power of a quarter, and again, we'll then think about how we could then apply this to the powers. Well, if we write it all to the power of a quarter, when we were previously dealing with um, indices where there's brackets involved, we know that something like x to the power of a to the power of b outside the bracket, you multiply those powers, and that would become x to the power of ab. Well, if we apply that to these fractions here, we just have to multiply the powers. And we've got a four and we've got an eight that both need multiplying by a quarter. And again, there's something else to be thinking about here because when you multiply by a quarter, what does it actually do? Well, it, it finds a quarter of that number. For example, if we took something like eight and we multiplied it by a quarter and picked eight because that's one of the numbers we're gonna do, we would get the answer eight over four, which is two. Okay, and a quarter of eight is two. So it just finds a quarter for us. So if we apply that onto these, we would have three to the power of and a quarter of four would be one. And then we would have the 10 and a quarter of the power of eight, we've already worked out, is two. So we have three to the power of one times 10 to the power of two. And that is now something that we can actually go ahead and work out because that's three times 10 squared, that's three times 100. So the final answer there would just be 300 and we don't have to do any more working out, and we've dealt with all those powers. So there was a lot going on there, so let's just have a very quick recap. So to start with, we thought about collecting together those numbers with the same base number, so we turned 27 into three cubed. We were then able to add that to the three to the power of one, or add together those powers, so that we had three to the power of four. We were then able to think about the fourth root in a different way, so putting it to the power of a quarter instead, and how that, how that affected the powers when we multiplied out the brackets. So the power of four was quartered to become one, and that power of eight was quartered to become two. We were then just able to work that out, so three times 10 squared. Okay, so a pretty tricky question. You can see obviously why this is problem solving, because these are a little bit trickier than normal questions, but I've got a couple of these for you to have a go at, so let's have a look at those now. 
Okay, so there's two questions here for you to have a go at. So pause the video, have a go at these two, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, so for the first one then. Now if we simplify or join together these numbers to start with, we've got two to the power of one multiplied by, and we can write eight as two cubed. Now that's gonna become two to the power of four when we add together those powers, and we're multiplying that by 10 to the power of 12. Now we can think about, again, the fourth root, which could be written as a power of a quarter. And if we write that as a power of a quarter, it's gonna quarter those powers. A quarter of four would become two to the power of one, and a quarter of 12 would become 10 to the power of three. And there we go, now we can work that out. That is two multiplied by a thousand, and two multiplied by a thousand gives us the answer 2000. And there is our first answer, we get the answer 2000. On to the next one, let's have a look at this. Approaching it in the same way, if we join these together, we've got four to the power of one multiplied by, and that 16 could be written as four squared. Now again, you could potentially turn this into powers of two, and that would be fine as well, but we may as well just stick with powers of four here, as we've got the same base number with those anyway. So that becomes four to the power of three, and we're gonna multiply that by the 10 to the power of 15. Now this time we have a cube root, so instead of writing a power of a quarter, that's gonna be a power of a third, and that's gonna find a third of each of those powers. So the power of three becomes four to the power of one, and the power of 15 is gonna become 10 to the power of five. So we've got quite a large power of 10 there, and that is gonna be four multiplied by, and how many zeros would be there? Well, 10 times 10 is 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. So we've got four times 100,000, which is gonna be 400,000. And there we go, and there is our final answer, and that is our first type of indice problem we're gonna have a look at in this video. Right, okay, so let's have a look at a different type of indice problem. Okay, so this one is involving a little bit of equations as well. So it says solve three to the power of two x is equal to one over 81. Now for the purpose of this one, we're gonna to have to think about how, what is another way of writing one over 81? And we've got three to the power of two x there. So if we can write one over 81 as a power of three, then potentially we might be able to have a look at them. Now, if we can say that this piece on the right is three to the power of something, then we can automatically have a look at those two powers because we've got three to the power of two X is equal to three to the power of something. And we know that those powers have to be the same. So we'll deal with that when we get there, but this is the kind of problem we're gonna have a look at here. Can we write this piece on the right as a power of three? Now the answer has to be yes, because 81 is a power of three. And if you, you might not know that, but if you work that out, three times three is nine, times three again is 27, times three again is 81. So 81 is three to the power of four. So we could write 81 as three to the power of four. Okay, so let's just write that down. But of course, this isn't 81, this is one over 81. So in order to get that to do the reciprocal, to make it one over 81, I would have to write it as three to the power of negative four. And three to the power of negative four is one over 81. So there we go, that's how we're gonna get it to a point where we can think about how we would write one over 81 as three to the power of four. If we now take that, we can set them equal to each other. So we have three to the power of two X, which is equal to three to the power of negative four. And we can now almost forget about the base numbers there because we know that that power of two X has to be equal to the negative four. So we can actually just write that as an equation and we can just say two X is equal to negative four and then solve it from there. Or well, two times the number is equal to negative four, and if you divide by two, you get x is equal to negative two. And there we go, we've solved it. We've got x is equal to negative two. That is the power that would have to go in there to ensure that we get one over 81, because three to the power of negative four is equal to eight, one over 81. So there we go, that is another type of problem. So let's have a little look and some questions on this for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions, very similar to the ones we just looked at. So have a go at these two, pause the video there, we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, so for the first one then. So 16, so 16 is gonna be two to the power of four. So if 16 is two to the power of four, then one over 16 would be equal to two to the power of minus four. So now we've got them both as two to the power of something, we can write our equation, two to the power of two x, has to be equal to two to the power of negative four. Just like the previous question, we can set those powers equal to each other. So two 
x is equal to negative 4 and we can divide by 2 x is equal to negative 2 and there we go and there's our first one now the second one's a little bit trickier than that one so let's have a look so we've got 5 to the power of 6x and we've got 1 over 125 now 125 is 5 to the power of 3 so we can write that as 5 to the power of 3 and that would mean that 1 over 125 is equal to 5 to the power of negative 3. So there we go, we've got it as 5 to the power of 3, or 5 to the power of negative 3 now. So we can set them equal to each other. 5 to the power of 6x is equal to 5 to the power of negative 3. And if we set those powers equal to each other, we have 6x that has to be equal to negative 3. And you can divide by 6, so x is equal to negative 3 divided by 6 which is equal to minus a half when we simplify that fraction. And there we go, and there's our final answer, x is equal to minus a half. So there we go, another couple of problems, and hopefully that was helpful, something a little bit different there, and problem solving with indices when we have to actually create the negative power by looking at the reciprocal. Right, let's have a look at our final problems. Okay, so these questions are the hardest out of the bunch. It says given that 3 to the power of negative n is 0 0.2, find the value of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of n. Now for starters here, we need to figure out what n is, so that we can actually think about how we would approach this. Now we might not actually need to find out what n is, but that's certainly where our, thought, our first train of thought should go with this. But we know that 3 to the power of negative n, just from those previous questions, means that we could write 0 0.2 in a different way. So instead of writing 3 to the power of negative n is equal to 0 0.2, could we get rid of the negative power and instead write the reciprocal? And yes, we can. We can write 3 to the power of positive n would therefore be equal to 1 divided by 0 0.2, the reciprocal of 0 0.2. Now that would be a strange way of writing that reciprocal because 0 0.2 is a decimal. We shouldn't have decimals within fractions, so we should actually work this out and we can actually divide 0 0.2 into 1. There's a couple of different ways that you could do that. Either you're going to know how many times 0 0.2 fits into 1, or you could simplify the fraction by multiplying the top and bottom by 5 to make the, uh, to make the denominator there become 1. And that would give us 3 to the power of n is equal to, and it would be 5 over 1, so the answer is 5. 0 0.2 does fit into 1 5 times. So we've got to a specific point here, we've got 3 to the power of n equals 5. Now at this point, you might be looking at it still and thinking, well, we can't figure that out. I don't know what power of 3 would give me the answer 5, and you'd be right to think that. Because actually what we need to do is look at this second piece of information. Now it's given to you in a bit of a strange way, because it says 3 to the power of 4 to the power of n. But that is actually a bit of a bit of a trick there to try and confuse you because actually if we have something to a power let's say x to the power of a all to the power of b those two powers just get multiplied and we get x to the power of a b but does it matter if it was written as x to the power of b all to the power of a because ultimately we would still get x to the power of a b so for this one here we don't actually need to write the powers that way round. We could actually write them the other way round. We could say that 3 to the power of n all to the power of 4 is exactly the same thing. So let's get rid of this because we don't need that. But ultimately, we now have an expression where it says 3 to the power of n to the power of 4. And that's what we're finding the value of. Now we've actually just worked out what 3 to the power of n is actually equal to. It's equal to 5. So instead of writing 3 to the power of n in the bracket, we could just put 5 in there, because we know that 3 to the power of n is equal to 5, which we've just got from there. And we want that to the power of 4. So we just need to work that out. We just need to do 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, which again, without a calculator, isn't very nice. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 again is 125, times 5 again is 625. So the answer for that is 625. And there we go, and there we are, we've solved it. So that was probably the hardest out of the bunch because we've actually done the reciprocal of the other side to get rid of that negative power in the first step just here. Then we have actually had to work that out, so one divided by 0 0.2, and that gave us a value of three to the power of n. We then did a little switch of the powers just here so that we were able to actually substitute the number five in and work out that value. 
So there's quite a lot going on and I have got a couple of these for you to have a practice on and uh, have a little go out. You're definitely going to need to practice some of these, but that they will be our last few questions for this video. So let's have a look at those now. Okay, so there's two questions here. So pause the video, see if you can get an answer for both of these and we'll go over the answer in just a sec. Right, so for the first one then. So five to the power of negative n. Now we could write that as five to the power of n is gonna be equal to one over 0.5. One divided by 0 0.5 is two. So five to the power of n is equal to two. And now we can do the little switch of the powers. So five to the power of n, all to the power of three. And we know that five to the power of n is equal to two. So that is gonna be two in the bracket to the power of three and two to the power of three is equal to eight. So there we go, there's our answer, eight. Not too bad, hopefully you were okay with that. On to the next one. We've got seven to the power of negative n is 0 0.1. So let's get rid of that negative power. We'll do the reciprocal of 0 0.1. So one over 0 0.1. One divided by 0 0.1 is 10. So seven to the power of n is equal to 10. And now we can do our little power swap. So instead of that, we'll write seven to the power of n, all to the power of four. And now we can substitute our value of seven to the power of n into our bracket. And we get instead 10 in the bracket to the power of four. And 10 to the power of four is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10,000. And there we go. And there is our value. We've got our answer. And there we go, we've solved all our problems. So there were three different types of question there. Hopefully they're all useful. You may need to go back and watch them and have another go at some of these, but hopefully that was useful and helpful. If it was, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.